And we started seeing the first images of what we can only understand is Israel's um, Iron Dome or even its arrow missile defense system intercepting those incoming uh, Iranian either drones or even missiles as well. Again, it's unclear at this stage, but what it's telling us is that uh, whatever Iran launched all those hours ago has now made it into Israeli airspace and have been taken out. Again, this has only really been happening in the last half hour or so. We received a number of alerts here on, on our phones, uh, which no doubt caused a huge amount of alarm uh, in many parts of this country as people were bracing for what was the inevitable. Now, again, as far as we know, Everything so far has been intercepted. We have not heard of any reports uh, of any kind of missile or any kind of drone making contact or target with anything yet. But again, it's still very early hours. The concern is that this is the first wave, Lana, that we can expect over the next minutes, hours uh, for more waves of incoming from that Iranian strike. But I should tell you that we have also received a statement which comes from the Iranian mission at the United yeah. Nations. And I'm just going to pull up uh, this uh, this uh, statement that we have uh, from the Iranians where they basically have said that they have concluded Included their um, campaign, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, and, uh, well, we've reached out to our sources on the ground inside Iran. They say that uh, the Revolutionary Guard themselves have not publicly said that this is concluded. When you look at Iranian state TV, it is now talking in past tense, which is significant uh, in moments like this, that they are talking in past tense. Whatever the case, we are still waiting to see what will happen in the next coming minutes or indeed hours. As we've been saying, sirens have gone off in different parts of Israel and we've seen interceptions in Israeli skies. And Lana. Antias, uh, that statement that came from uh, the um, Iranian mission to the U.N., uh, I believe that we actually have a full screen, if our control room can put that up. I'm going to read uh, it to you. Part of what they were saying was that this was a retaliatory strike in response to Israel's action that they believe uh, had taken out members of their military that were in Syria at an embassy there, according to Iran. They say, quote, the matter can be deemed concluded. However, should the Israeli regime make another mistake, sort of telegraphing about what they want Israel's response to be, quote, Iran's response will be considerably more severe. It is a conflict between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime from which the U.S. must stay away. So obviously warnings there, even as they're saying that this matter is done, that they do not want it to further escalate. So uh, MTS. We understand that we've been that you've been seeing their uh, indications that the Iron Dome is working, that that the defensive operations to try to shoot down those domes uh, have so far been successful. Are you actually seeing some of those explosions in the sky? Yeah. So here in Tel Aviv. Um, which, of course, is on the coast, uh, we did see what we believe were two intercepts. But again, it's really over the skies of Jerusalem, where, of course, many journalists are based and they have a lot of cameras pointed to the sky at this hour, uh, where we saw the majority of those interceptions. But again, if you look at uh, the areas where most of the sirens were, it really was in the south of the country. And what is in the south of the country? Of course, you have the Gaza theater, but really what you have is the Negev Desert, which is a very large, very open space. There are Israeli military installations there, but there's not a lot of people there. Now, as we were anticipating just what exactly was going to happen over the next coming hours, we saw intelligence reports from various agencies saying that Iran was going to be very specific in its targeting, that it, even though it was targeting Israel, and as you said in your introduction, I think it's such a crucial, vital point to make that this is the first time that uh, the Iranian leadership has done this, this leadership which has been in place since 1979. The Islamic Republic of Iran has carried out uh, strikes on Israel. Uh, you know, again, 44 years uh, we've not seen this. Um, it is so important to underscore and point out just how significant this is. But again, 
if what the intelligence that we were reading was bears out that the majority of these uh, drones and missiles potentially were targeted to the south, which again is a largely unpopulated area, then that is a significant si signal from the Iranians, which is we wanted to show that we were responding to the devastation of our embassy in Damascus. Remember, that's what triggered this specific response from Iran, is that on the 1st of April, uh, the U.S. confirmed that the Israeli military targeted the Iranian embassy inside Damascus, destroying that building, killing a number of, killing a number of people, including a key general. Now, uh, in saying all of that, if it is true that the Iranians targeted relatively empty areas, again, it tells us that they were one to show a show of force and show of strength, but were perhaps trying to be a bit more deliberate and not targeting densely populated civilian areas. Again, this is some, some of the intelligence that we were hearing that Iran was going to be very specific in its targeting. Whatever the case, from the Israeli point of view, that doesn't matter. They have been targeted by Iran, and Israel will have to respond. And although we have that statement that you read out from Iran saying, we've concluded it, uh, and essentially saying that they want to move on unless Israel does something else, it's very clear Israel will have to respond. How Israel respond right now, we don't know for sure, but we do know that Israel's top leadership are here in Tel Aviv meeting at this very hour. Very Mara. interesting about that. Uh, MTS, I'm also struck by the fact that you have been um, monitoring Iranian state television and the changes that you've witnessed with that. I'm hoping that you can tell us a little bit more about what you've seen. Yeah, it's really interesting. So our sources on the ground have been kind of trying to paint a picture for us as to just what the mood in Tehran, the capital, is right now. And basically what we've learned is that it's pretty quiet there right now. It's obviously the very early hours of the morning, as it is here uh, in Tel Aviv as well, although there are some university students that were out on the streets sort of celebrating this move by uh, the, the leadership there. Uh, but in saying that, uh, right now there doesn't seem to be an indication from what we're seeing, that the government has, in the, in the days preceding this strike, had really prepared the nation for war. And what I mean by that is, of course, if Iran was saying, this is the start of a war with Israel, that they would have put in some measures in place to uh, beef up their military presence in parts of the country, tell people in populated areas to perhaps move out of that area. And none of that has happened. Again, these are from our sources on the ground inside Iran. So it does seem that Iran in its calculus believes that what they launched, while significant and was important for them uh, to show as a show of strength and force because of what Israel did inside Damascus by targeting its uh, embassy there and indeed killing that general and a few and a number of other people as well, that maybe the Israeli response won't be the kind of response that so many are afraid of in that we could see an all-out war between these two countries. And that would be devastating. We have to remember, Iran is an enormous country. 90 million people live in Iran. It is twice the size of Ukraine. So the idea of a full-scale war between Israel and Iran, I think, would be catastrophic for Iran. Of course, it would be terrible for Israel as well. And that, of course, is something that the U.S., the White House, the president has said very clearly they do not want to see. They do not want to see the war in Gaza engulf this region. It's something they've been trying to push against from happening for over six months now. But again, we are in uncharted territory, Lana. We have never seen Iran target Israel like this. And the question now becomes again, what will Israel do in response? All right. MTS Tayeb there in Tel Aviv. Thank you. You see on your screen right now some of that activity that's happening over Israel. These are shots of Bethlehem and the skies over Bethlehem late in the evening into the early morning hours. Air raid sirens have been heard across major cities in Israel. And many of these flares that you're seeing are believed to be action by the uh, Israeli defense, the Iron Dome, uh, and other defensive capabilities by Israel to try and take out those, that large number of Israeli or of uh, Iranian drones that were launched earlier today.
Well, President Biden is monitoring the situation while huddled with his security team. CBS News' Natalie Brand has more from the White House. Natalie, great to have you back with us. We understand that the president is now meeting with his National Security Council. We watched as he cut his vacation or his, his weekend in Delaware short and came back to the White House. What are you learning from officials there now? Well, Lana, we know that this meeting with national security leaders is ongoing. Top administration officials are in that meeting in the Situation Room at this hour. That includes the Defense Secretary, Secretary of State Blinken, the CIA Director, the National Security Advisor. At this point, Lana, we are not expecting uh, on-camera comments or a public appearance by President Biden Saturday night. Uh, but the NSC says that the president uh, is being regularly updated, uh, saying the attack is likely to unfold over hours. That's the statement they put out uh, a little while ago. Obviously, this is still unfolding. The White House trying to assess what exactly is going on on the ground in Israel. Uh, but again, an important message from the president that we saw Friday and continuing in paper statements today is that the U.S. support for Israel and its defense remains ironclad and that the U.S. is standing beside Israel uh, ready to support their defense and threats from Iran. And our Ellie Watson at the Pentagon she reports that the U.S. military has, in fact, shot down some drones that Iran sent towards Israel. She also says that, according to a military official, U.S. forces in the region continue to shoot down Iranian-launched drones targeting Israel and that U.S. forces remain postured to provide additional defensive support and also uh, force protection for U.S. assets in the region. We know ahead of the attack that additional assets had been moved, including uh, a Navy destroyer being repositioned closer uh, to Israel to bolster uh, regional deterrence and also, again, increase U.S. force protection. Uh, and earlier today, Ali Watson and Margaret Brennan reported uh, that the U.S. had uh, fighter jets on standby, again, positioned to be able to shoot down incoming from Iran. Lana. And Natalie, we've been most focused on the White House, but I'm wondering if you can tell us more about what congressional lawmakers are saying. Yeah, so far in the lawmakers and the top congressional leaders who are uh, putting out statements and uh, posts on social media, they are reiterating this message of unwavering ironclad support from the U.S. First to CBS, we received uh, a statement from Senate Foreign Relations Chair Ben Cardin, who says, quote, Israel has an inherent right to defend itself against these attacks from Iran and its proxies before, during, and after they occur. He says he supports President Biden, Biden's ironclad commitment, commitment, and he also goes on to caution the Iranian regime to not widen this, quote, already ill-conceived attack. Such escalation, especially targeting uh, U.S. personnel and assets, should be dealt with swiftly and decisively. Over in the House, the Foreign Relations Committee chair there, Michael McCall, put out a, a short statement. His office says he's still waiting to get a better picture of what unfolds uh, later tonight. But so far, he says the U.S. stands with its ally. Ongoing Iranian attacks are dangerous and escalatory. Iran and its puppets must be held to account for these reckless attacks. And this is some of what we're seeing, again, on social media, but really... Uh, the question moving forward um, and what a lot of analysts, experts on the region are watching, based on the outcome of this attack by Iran, what is Israel's next steps? Uh, and we know that there's diplomacy under the way, uh, underway rather, by U.S. officials and international leaders to really try to tamp down the tensions that have been ongoing in the region because, of course, everyone wants to avoid a major regional escalation. So the question here becomes, what does Israel do next? Uh, and one Iran expert told me today 
the Iranian regime doesn't know uh, whether the Biden administration has the political influence over Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to, to really avoid escalation here. But that's certainly what everyone is hoping for. All right, Natalie, thank you so much. We are going to take a quick break. We'll continue all of our global reporting and head back over to Israel. We'll be right back. Mr. President, there's a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Does this carrier strike group stand ready? It's just incredible to see there's an active search and rescue operation going on 12 hours after this accident. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. I had progressively fallen deeper into the world of online sports betting. The risk is the rush. What do you think is driving the spike in popularity? I think it's legality. If it's legal, I'm going to use it. There are ways to bet when you are 18. We've created an epidemic of child gambling. You can't walk into a male dormitory in a college campus without sports betting happening. It's America's most neglected problem. I use sports betting as a way to escape, when in reality, I'm choosing self-destruction. Whatever I had left, it was gone. The purpose of the industry is to get you to play to extinction. And that means until all your money is gone. Stories start with the who, what, when, and where. But it's why it's important to you that matters most. Knowing what to ask is how you open the door to a deeper understanding. See you on Primetime, streaming free everywhere. An original documentary from CBS Reports. That desired farm is a wonderful place to raise children, and it still is. Promises broken. Black Americans have been the target of racism and discrimination pretty much from the time they acquired ownership in the land. Costing black farmers hundreds of billions in generational wealth. They did everything to make sure we were run off that land. But communities are uniting to continue the fight. Collective ownership is powerful to keep their land and their dreams alive. To watch my children play on land that we own means everything. To land is power. Most definitely. 40 Acres and a Mule, now streaming on the free CBS News app. People with developmental disabilities were once sequestered by the hundreds of thousands in institutions. Many of our fellow citizens are suffering tremendously because lack of attention, lack of imagination, lack of uh, adequate manpower. Disability activists have since torn down barriers blocking them from living at home or in the community. We conclude that Title II of the ADA requires states to provide community-based treatment for persons with mental disabilities. But of the 16,000 people who remain in state-operated institutions, half are in five states, and Illinois is one of them. I don't want to live in the institution. It makes me feel discriminated against. Do you think there are people living in institutions in Illinois that don't need to be living there? Yeah, because they're proving it as soon as they get out. Welcome back to our continuing coverage on the Iran retaliatory attacks against Israel. The U.S. and Israel have shot down Iranian drones. Air raid sirens have been sounding in the south and central areas of the country. We want to go back over now to Jerusalem, and that's where we find our Robert Berger. So, Robert, we've been speaking with you for hours ever since we first got word that Iran had launched these weapons from their own territory. Tell us what you are seeing now in Jerusalem. Yeah, about a half an hour ago, the drones or perhaps missiles started coming in. I heard booms first, actually. And then uh, it was like shooting stars. I would say 30 or so missiles or drones started coming down right here in, in Jerusalem, pretty much over my head. The house was shaking, uh, I would say, six or seven really loud booms. 
Some were intercepted, but at least my impression from the naked eye was that not all of them were intercepted. We don't have reports of casualties, but certainly, uh, you know, a scary moment here in Jerusalem. And, and I have to say, the feeling was that they would hit military targets and not Jerusalem or the big cities. I, it's interesting, Robert, because given that that has been part of the discussion, as we've been hoping that the, uh, the conflict could become de-escalated, even at the same time that it's being escalated, that we're seeing these images from Bethlehem, which is so culturally significant, uh, particularly to Christians, of many of these missiles coming in, or these drones coming in, rather, and action we have heard, and CBS News has been able to confirm, Iron Dome action to help bring, to stop those, uh, those weapons from actually having uh, an impact there on the ground. We also understand that the United States has engaged some of these Iranian drones. Talk to us about what this means. The U.S. Uh, certainly is involved. The Jordanians also, there were drones coming in over their territory. If you know the geography between Iran and um, Israel, a lot of this has to go through Jordan. And they also shot down a lot of drones, but a lot of them got through. I, that that was what it was kind of shocking to me when I was looking outside to see these shooting stars. That's what it looked like coming down. So um, it's, you have a lot of regional play, players involved here. And, and, you know, the U.S. is involved um, militarily, uh, as is Jordan. Um, and uh, there's a possibility also that maybe this is just the first wave. Uh, we've heard that there are two or three waves. Maybe we'll see another wave in an hour or so. So we do understand, if it's to be believed, from the statement that we received from uh, the Iranian um, mission to the UN, that their action on, on their part has concluded pending uh, what sort of response the Israeli regime makes. It says Iran's response will be considerably more severe, as you can see in the statement, if, quote, the Israeli regime makes another mistake. It also has a warning to the United States saying it's a conflict between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime from which the U.S. must stay away. Do you see anything in the actions that the U.S. has taken so far that are likely to make Iran... Uh, upset in a way that could further escalate this? Well, the, U the U.S. right now is involved defensively. It shot down a lot of these drones, and we'll see if there's another wave that comes through. So they're involved defensively already. They're not involved offensively in going after Iran. But I, I even though Iran is saying, OK, it's over, let's call it even, you, you attacked, Israel attacked uh, our consulate in Iran, in, uh, sorry, in, in Syria. Syria and killed the top general. Um, and we'll call it even. The Israelis aren't going to call it even. I, I expect uh, significant retaliation inside Iran. And they are meeting now uh, there in Israel. So what is the likely response that one can anticipate? And understood that, that, uh, that we are trying to be predictive uh, in that in this breaking news situation, but what might be the spectrum of responses that we could anticipate from Israel? Well, it's, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, they're, they're, Israel also has missiles. You know, it, it, I, will, it, will it target, uh, what will it target? Will it hit Tehran? Uh, will it take the opportunity now that it's been talking about for years? I would say a decade they've been talking about knocking out Iran's nuclear program, which, of course, would be a massive escalation. The U.S. perhaps will try to, you know, get Israel to, for, to um, take a restrained response. Uh, but they just attacked Jerusalem as well as the rest of Israel with a barrage of rockets, uh, sorry, barrage of drones and perhaps missiles as well. So, uh, you know, it's likely to escalate and we'll see how far the Israelis go, but it might be an opportunity to hit those nuclear facilities. And then you really have a big war on your hand. Well, that would certainly change the calculus significantly. Robert Berger, thank you. Thank you. We are going to continue to monitor the situation there in Israel and check in with all of our sources 
as we monitor these retaliatory strikes that Iran has made towards Israel. U.S. officials say the U.S. military has shot down some of the missiles that were headed towards Israel, and we are still expecting more of this activity to continue. We're going to take a short break. When you wake up in the morning, we want to be your go-to team. Nate has one of the quickest minds I've ever seen. Tony has a way of making people feel comfortable. Gail has this unbelievable knack to ask the question that you're asking at home. I've been told I could talk to a tree, and that's pretty much true. I don't go to work in the morning. I go for coffee with my two good friends, and we talk about the world. Your morning routine just got better. CBS Mornings, weekdays at 7. It didn't seem like anything could happen because nothing ever happens in East Palestine, but it did. Authorities released toxic fumes from five derailed train cars. Resident, please evacuate. Cute bronchitis due to chemical fumes. Did you ever have these problems before the derailment? No, ma'am. This neighborhood's not safe no more. We can assure the community that there's not vinyl chloride entering their communities. Then why are there so many people feeling these various symptoms of bloody noses or difficulty breathing and bronchitis? That's a hard question to answer. We're talking about one of the most blatant releases of a mixture of some of the most toxic chemicals that we've seen in America. I feel like now I have a duty to warn other communities. If my daughter has to watch me die of cancer, at least it saves someone else. This case. It's like a screenplay, something straight out of Hollywood. But it's not fiction. It's 48 hours. Human remains found this week. Four families shattered. There's no physical evidence. The mystery would haunt investigators for years. There's some questions that have to be asked and need to be answered. Get it, like a John Grisham novel. A gripping true crime original. 48 hours. Now streaming on the free CBS News app. This is CBS. of a lifetime. Seeing the Earth from space, it was so exhilarating. But the risks that come with the territory. There have been four fatal accidents. That's a 1% fatal accident rate. Might make you look before you launch. If you had one out of 100 airplanes falling out of the sky, we'd have a public crisis. Space Tourism, now streaming on the free CBS News app. Welcome back to CBS News. I'm Lana Zak, and we continue to monitor Iran's retaliatory strike towards Israel. U.S. officials say that the U.S. military has shot down some missiles that were headed towards Israel, and we continue to monitor. Speaking to our, our folks on the ground, the situation in Tel Aviv, Israel, where you can see fairly clear skies, not a lot of reports of sirens or activity there. We have heard from our Robert Berger, who is in Jerusalem, that they have seen something more similar to what you see in Bethlehem. That happened just moments ago. Those uh, shooting stars as they appear in the sky, activity from the Iron Dome that's trying to take out those drones that were launched from Iran, Iran's territory. That is significant because it has never before happened, as we understand it, that Iran has directly attacked Israel. I want to bring in Charles Faint now for additional analysis. He is the chair for the Spe Study of Special Operations and Deputy Editorial Director for the Modern War Institute at West Point. Thank you for being with us. So, first of all, what is your first reaction to these strikes? And when you see these images, tell us what you understand is happening. 
Hey, Lana, thank you. Yeah, this is, as you mentioned, an unprecedented situation with the attack directly coming from Iran. In my experience, first reports on things like this are often highly erroneous. So I think it's smart for the world to wait until it does so a little, little bit to see not only what was targeted, but more importantly, what was struck. This was an interesting move by Iran. The flight time, four to six hours for these missiles and drones in some cases, gives a lot of time for those weapons to be intercepted. And that might have been Iran's intent in to have this huge show of force as a deterrence to future Israeli and U.S. military operations. However, if they were to time this attack with something massive from Hezbollah, who has, as we know, thousands of rockets, that could be a devastating and overwhelming situation for Israel with the Iron Dome and the other missile systems in the area. So it'll be interesting to, to see in the, in the light of, literal light of day and in the coming days what was targeted, what was struck, and what Israel's reaction will be. Certainly want to talk to you more about uh, Israel's potential reaction, but I want to follow up on something that you said about the potential for additional attacks from Hezbollah or another proxy for Iran. We received that statement from the uh, Iran Iranian mission to the United Nations saying that the matter is now concluded. Do you take them at their word on that? So this was a course of action that a lot of security analysts predicted might happen. Iran had to, in their opinion, do some type of big response to this action by Israel. So by doing this and then saying it's over, basically taking their ball and going home, they're signaling that it could be a de-escalation. But as we often say in the military, the enemy has a vote, and Israel will also decide how to respond to this attack on their homeland. And that could take any number of of forms. We could see assassinations inside Iran. We could see massive cyber attacks. We could see airstrikes. Certainly, all options are on the table for Israel. And a large part of that, Lana, will depend on how successful these Iranian strikes were against Israel. Uh, and Charles, given the point that you were making initially, that they're they were already at the ready. The Supreme Leader of Iran had telegraphed that they were going to take retaliatory action, that what they chose to launch, at least from what we've seen so far, were some of these slower-moving drones that took, as you said, between four and six hours to make it to Israeli airspace. And many of, what, many of those were actually shot down uh, en route to Israel, not only by the United States, but also by Jordan. What do you think a likely response from Israel could look like if the damage is not, in fact, severe? So any number of things could happen. I think at, at a minimum, we would see some cyber attacks, something to de deliberately and directly target the regime. I don't think that future strikes against the IRGC are off the table from Israel, especially with the most recent one that they, they did, the individual, the main individual that was targeted was admitted by Iran to be one of the chief planners of the October 7th attacks. So those things will continue. What we'll also see is things that we've already seen from Iran, the seizing of a merchant vessel in international waters today that was affiliated with a, a wealthy mm -hmm. Israeli. And that's a further signal of their ability to impact world markets. So I, it'll be interesting to see what develops between these two nations, Alana. Yeah, uh, that action taken in the Strait of Hormuz earlier today. Um, and all of that sort of leads me to, to wonder, Charles, how Israel's response differs um, from these other groups, uh, like the group responsible for, for uh, taking that shipping vessel, uh, Hezbollah, which we know has been very active on the West Bank, or other Iranian proxies versus Iran. And, and given the significance of these weapons being launched from inside Iranian territory, how does that change the calculation? So you brought up a good point, Lana, with all the different proxy organizations. You got the Houthis down in the south. Hamas is kind of on its back foot right now. You've got Hezbollah up in the north. But you might also have some action in the West Bank, which could also be very concerning to the Israelis. So I read a report earlier today about some severe tensions that arose after an Israeli teenager was murdered right. in the West Bank. So what we could see, probably the worst case course of action on Israel's perspective, is this massive strike on, on Iran wasn't just one wave, if it's several waves, tied with massive attacks from Hezbollah and an uprising of some type in the West Bank, that could be very bad for Israel and the region. And going back to your question about the response, what the response might be, 
in something like that, which is nearly existential threat for Israel, certainly everything would be on the table, some type of massive response, most likely by air and by missile strike, because Israel has missiles as well, directed at important targets inside Iran. Charles, uh, in the weeks leading up to this, there was international calls for a ceasefire. There were criticisms of the massive number of casualties in Gaza. Uh, there were there were uh, one of the biggest headlines was about those aid workers that were yeah. killed by the IDF. Now the conversation is about an attack from Iran. We have seen so many of the same. Uh, people and organizations and countries that were urging Israel to change action, now saying we stand entirely with Israel. Is this potentially a strategic mistake on the part of Iran? I think that rem remains to be seen. It's an excellent question. So I think in Iran's calculus, this is something that they had to do. This is their backs up against the wall. They've been attacked, uh, attacked against their embassy, killing one of their major leaders in the RGC. So I think Iran sees this in their interests, and it'll be interesting to see what happens afterwards. So you mentioned the aid workers that were killed in that unfortunate incident inside Gaza. I think that what we're looking for right now, Lana, is for all of these major players, countries around the world, non-state actors, non-governmental organizations, to really prevail upon both sides to keep this from getting into something bigger. And on that front, we have known that these attacks were coming um, ever since April 1st and, uh, and Iran blaming Israel for those military leaders that were killed in Damascus. What is the significance, explain for our viewers, of Iran not making these attacks more of a surprise? We, we knew that retaliation was happening and we knew when it was likely to happen. Yeah, we also knew, for, based on past experiences, that something like this w w is likely, like a show of force. So when the American forces killed Soleimani, who was also a, a big leader in the ROGC, was thrown on our side in Iraq and elsewhere around the world, after he was killed by, by the U.S., Iran shot a bunch of missiles at U.S. forces inside Iraq. Those Some troops were unfortunately wounded, but no one was killed and there was no further escalation. So Iran thought that they they saved face, they carried out a mission against the, the United States in response to that, and then the issue was largely over. So there might be something to be said about that as a pattern for what's happening now with Israel. All right. Charles Faint, thank you. Thanks, Lana. We're going to continue to monitor this situation. You're looking at Bethlehem li uh, images taken just moments ago of the skies above Bethlehem. We are going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Washington is the seat of power. Of national security, foreign policy, global economics, every story comes through Washington in some way. We bring some of the most powerful voices in America to the table. We don't just ask the questions, you have to go deeper. We try to understand what's at the heart of the issue we're talking about to then come forward with solutions. Face the Nation on CBS. The justices ruled that Harvard and the University of North Carolina violated the Constitution. In the aftermath of the Supreme Court decision to end affirmative action in college admissions, uncertainty sets in for some students of color. Affirmative action really gave us an equal opportunity. CBS Reports explores the historic decision and what it means for those chasing an opportunity to change their lives. I knew that college was the ticket to break this cycle. The end of affirmative action, now streaming on the free CBS News app. Okay, let's go. You guys good? Hey. All right, we good? Keep going. The clock, it's ticking. Off we go. 60 minutes. 60 minutes. 60 minutes. It's time for 60 Minutes, Sundays on CBS. An original documentary from CBS Reports. AI is among the most world-changing technologies ever. Curing diseases, scientific breakthroughs, making lives better. It can help us with medical discovery, scientific discoveries, doing better agriculture, having cures for things like Alzheimer's. It's also going to really transform the way we work. The uplifting potential of artificial intelligence is limitless. It gives you a friend. 
somebody to chat with 24 7 that is non-judgmental he makes me feel loved and desired and so are its downfalls the problem with all this ai is that it's unpredictable and uncontrollable the choices we make now will have lasting effects for decades maybe even centuries the chat gpt revolution now streaming on the free cbs news app we are about to see American weapons in the hands of Mexican cartels. A gun pipeline to Mexico. We are arming the cartels. 100%, no doubt about it. Happening right under our noses. Uh, who's doing something about this? Nobody. A CBS Reports exclusive. Most Americans have no idea that we are effectively arming the enemy next door. This is the story the American people need to know. Arming cartels, now streaming on the free CBS News app. America decides, taking you inside American democracy. The most important stories on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour basis. You're going to hear a lot of reporting. It is clearly a pivotal moment. Gun control, the economy, education, both sides of the political aisle fight it out for power. Bring you the analysis that you need. Thoughtfully, with context. Be part of the conversation. On CBS News Streaming. Welcome to America Decides, Monday through Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. In these conflicts, there are always the political leaders and then there are the people on the ground. And in this case, we have been focused much more on the political leaders and their actions and likely reactions to the news that Iran has launched these missiles or rather these drones from their own territory. We also wanted to bring you the information that we received from our CBS News producer who's on the ground in Tehran. He says it's just two hours after midnight and the streets of Tehran are almost empty and calm, except for one spot in front of Tehran University where there's a small gathering of supporters giving response to Israel. They can see that the state TV is showing images of similar gatherings in other cities, too. And he also says that the, an important point is that the administration in Iran didn't do anything in preparation for a war or a possible Israeli attack on the Iranian cities. In recent days, there's no indication of war in any part of Iran. The government has not stopped air traffic. You're also seeing there Bethlehem, the images of the sky just moments ago, lit up like shooting stars as those drones made their way, many of them from Iran into Israeli airspace. We do know that the Israeli military has some of the strongest defensive capabilities in the world. We know that there were signs of Iron Dome activity that helped to shoot down many of these drones. We also know that at least the United States, in addition to other countries, have been working to stop these drones from making their way into Israel. For more in-depth coverage on Iran's retaliatory attacks against Israel, we're going to go back over to our partners at the BBC who are covering the latest as well. Commanding General of the U.S. Central Command, General Carrillo, has, has you know, directed uh, with respect to uh, the danger to innocent civilians, you know, starting from the West Bank, uh, where a lot of these engagements are, you know, they're going to, the Israelis are going to try to engage as far out uh, these drones and the cruise missiles. So uh, if any of them land, you, you obviously have to worry about the collateral, you know, material that will fall as a result of engaging them in the air before they land. But if they do land, they are mass casualty producing uh, munitions and obviously uh, the drone is is smaller relative to the cruise missiles, but and then you know ballistic missiles. If you know, hopefully they won't be fired. But if they are fired, uh, you're talking you know dozens of uh, kilograms of uh, explosive, and that will cause significant uh, casualties if they land into a major you know populated area. Mark, I do just want to ask you how far you think U.S. involvement could go. If you think about American foreign policy in recent years, the trend has been for less involvement. Uh, if you think, for example, uh, Afghanistan and so on, do you think that changes when it comes to what we're seeing um, and the United States' steadfast relationship with Israel? Well, I, I can't speak to that other than what, you know, our president has said, which is, you know, our commitment to uh, Israel's security, and, and I think even broadly to our other partners in the region, is, is ironclad. So I believe that uh, as this